Good evening. Welcome, Planetary Penny followers. Well, here we are. And tonight there is a full moon lunar eclipse in the star sign of Sagittarius, which means that's opposite Gemini, where the sun is currently. Now, it's actually been a bit of a strange day. I've been quite what I would call discombobulated. And I'm wondering if anyone else out there has felt a bit discombobulated today, because that would be actually a little bit of this eclipse energy. Now, let me explain what I mean. When we have an eclipse, it means that um, basically um, for a lunar eclipse, we have the full moon, which is going to be over here somewhere, somewhere in the background there. And then we have planet Earth where we are. And then on the other side of the Earth, we have the sun where it is setting currently. Now, a full moon means the moon gets its full face shone on by the sun on the moon. But with an eclipse and with a lunar eclipse, and this is only what they call a penumbral lunar eclipse, which means it's only the outer side, the outer edge that will actually be affected by this, this eclipse. What it actually means is that the Earth has kind of got in the way. It's kind of shadowing part of the moon. So I think we have to take this kind of symbolically. So let me just tell you a little bit about my day because I think this was um, how I experienced this eclipse because I think we will all have experienced the eclipse in different ways and we will have had something I would call an eclipse moment. Um, it may be good, it may be bad, it may be just, uh, what was that about kind of thing. So I had an eclipse moment earlier where basically my mouth ran ahead of my brain and I started saying things that I kept thinking, why am I saying all these things? Because I didn't know what I'm talking about. So that for me, that was my um, eclipse moment because you see, we have to consider that with this eclipse today, we have Gemini in the picture and Sagittarius, but we also have Mars in Pisces. So with Mars in Pisces and it's forming what we call a T-square. So that means you've got the moon here in Sagittarius. Hello, everybody. Hi, Ronald. Nice to see you, Judy, Claire, Andrea. <laughs> so we've got the moon here in Sagittarius. We've got the sun over here in Gemini. We've got the earth here and it's just shadowing some of the moon from the sun. And then I'll be Mars in Pisces. Now Pisces is ruled by Neptune and Neptune is there as well. And Mars is actually coming up to conjunct Neptune in Pisces. Now we need to understand a little bit about Neptune because Neptune is um, a great illusion planet. So it brings veils and mists and it can bring confusion, dreams, inspiration, ideas. It's very much a kind of an intangible force, Neptune. Now, Mars rules Aries. Mars is, let's go for it. Mars is, huh, I'm feeling potent and powerful and aggressive and action built. Now, Mars in Pisces, which is a water sign, isn't very comfortable. So you might get what I would call um, steam because fire and water mixed together would create a boiling point and steam. So um, you might find that you have words with someone which are a bit kind of even not really re very relevant because it's it's hot air, it's steam, it's kind of just 
letting off, letting off steam. Actually, my cats in there are just letting off steam at the moment. I just seen cats going. That's the full moon energy. Because the other thing I wanted to mention is that, hi, Rebecca. And the other thing I want to mention is about this whole symbolism of eclipsing. Because do you feel today you have been eclipsed or something you're doing, a sort of a, a, a subject you're doing has been eclipsed? Do, hi, Rebecca. Hi, Sylvan. Um, do you feel that you have been eclipsed? Hello, Sylvan. There's all these little names popping up, so I just have to be polite and say hello because they're, oh, Daniel Shembri Volpe. I love this girl. Thank you. Hello. Um, so, or has somebody eclipsed you? Or are you eclipsing yourself? Now, there's a thought. Because sometimes we do that. I mean, I've talked to a few people today and looked at a few people's charts individually to see what the eclipse was doing for them. And most of them I've said, have a pyjama day, stay at home, eat chocolate, drink wine, watch a film. Because that's a little bit how it feels. But we have to also look at the energy of the moon in Sagittarius because Sagittarius, ruled by Gemini, is a sign about higher learning, about education, about teaching. So the moon, if you like, has come into Sagittarius to teach us something. Now, in some ways, um, because it's eclipsed by the earth, we may not be picking up on a lesson that we could learn, on something that is happening to us that we could really, really benefit from, that we could really, really learn from. And the other thing I want to say about the moon is that it is a full moon and full moons are about culminations, um, endings, um, solutions, a kind of um, just a realisation. Now, I think it's very interesting in the news over the last couple of days because often you feel or the events of an eclipse and a full moon will be felt on the few days leading up. So you might have found that the last few days have been a little bit you know, angst because Mars is making this harsh angle. Hello, my, my, my video decided to do something on its own and that's not what I want you to do video. And I'm just going to be, rotate it. Okay, yes, it's telling me to rotate it. Oh no, okay, right. It's just being a bit silly. I will just hold it like this. And so, <laughs> you see, a Mercury is not even retrograde yet. Oh God. <laughs> Um, so I think it's behaving itself now. It's probably the wind. Um, let's put you down there. There we go. So, um, so basically, what? I, hi, Angel, Jan, Aiden, Jamie, Zach, and Alba. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Hi, Jackie. Um, where was I? Yes, yeah, so you might have felt the energy over the last few days being a little bit kind of. Uh, energetic but I just think it's interesting what's happening in the news because I want to mention the Madeleine McCann case because I think it's very interesting that they are now coming up with a I'm just going to try and tilt that a bit there we go um, they're coming up with the pretty kind of like nearly conclusive evidence that they've found out what happened to her or at least not in detail but they found out what happened to this little girl that disappeared all those years ago and that they have someone already in prison for other crimes who may have been the perpetrator of that particular crime. Now I find that very interesting. Yes Diane Borghese it is very weird energy and high saver from Marcel Fawn. So the energy is such at the moment. I mean, we can see it with the ongoing happenings with the virus. We can see it with all the kind of, oh my God, this phone, this, this is really weird. I think we're going to have to um, just hold you by hand now because that doesn't want to play. So we're going to have to just use this. There we go. So um, it is very strange. Um, the energy that is going on 
on the planet at the moment because it is particularly um, explosive. And I think that the combination, of, you know, well, we have, of course, got Mars moving into Aries a little bit later. Um, not quite sure of the exact date, but it will be in, Mar in, in Aries a bit later. Now, Mars rules Aries, so that is going to be... Oh, with all this stuff going on and all my big boys down in uh, Capricorn, because Saturn will be back in Capricorn soon. It's still in Aquarius, but they're all moving backwards. And you may have found also over the last um, few weeks that things that you thought you'd resolved, even little niggly things are coming back to sort of ask to be addressed again. And this is partly because we have got these retrograde planets and they're just trying to, uh, you know, remind us of what we need to kind of sort of um, just deal with, quite frankly. And um, also let's look at Gemini because the sun has got retrograde Venus or, that conjuncted uh, the sun just a few days ago. And, you know... You may have sort of, um, you may have had um, connections with, you know, maybe somebody from the past. Um, th there could have been lots of interesting communications going on. And, uh, you know, Gemini is about communication and, but it's very cerebral. It's not feeling level. It's not like, say, Pisces, where we've got Mars. So it's like the, the sort of the stirrings of Mars. Um, <laughs> Diane, you're American and it's crazy over there. Yeah, I've noticed on uh, the news, it's certainly crazy. And I don't think that's going to settle anytime soon, I'm afraid. But, um, you know, we'll, let's hope, let's hope. But this energy is going to be around for quite a few months. In fact, it's going to be around for a while longer. Now, also, yes, that's what I wanted to say, that Mars in Pisces coming up to Neptune, it can be unclear communication. It, it, it's like we're scattered. All day today, my energy has felt scattered. My, my thinking, my um, way of communicating has just been a bit well, discombobulated, because that is the word I want to use. And it's the the energy, I actually felt it lift a bit by this afternoon, because with eclipses, you feel most of the energy um, leading up to it. So like the day before will probably be the day when it's most kind of there. And we have, of course, coming up, on the 21st of June, because I'm going to move on now to talking about that. Um, the 21st of June, we have, of course, the midsummer solstice. It's on a Sunday. It's Father's Day in Malta. And it is a new moon solar eclipse. And again, it's just a very partial eclipse. It's just a little tiny bite of the sun will be shadowed um, by the moon. Um, I will be doing a live that day, but probably not till after the event in the evening because it takes place very early in the morning. And I don't think any of us want to be up really early in the morning to listen to all of this. <laughs> so we'll do it in the evening. And after the event is fine. And uh, the other thing I want to say is that next month, uh, if you've some of you have tuned into my YouTube channel and seen the um, monthly videos I've been doing, which are for all the star signs. But next month, I'm going to put them all into, well, my very clever tech guy, Jerry, fabulous guy, is going to put them all into one video and bookmark it. And that means you can just hear my initial blurb at the beginning of the video about what to expect in July. So we're leaping ahead a month. And it will also tell you how to go forward to Aries or Leo or Sagittarius or Pisces. And so you can just leap ahead and see everybody else that's, you know, means something to you that you want to read their stars. Um, so I think just before I bring this to a conclusion, um, 
the main thing about full moons is that they do bring kind of completions and closures. So you may be aware of areas of your life where things, even if they're not quite closed, look as if they're coming to some sort of closure. And that may be a welcome relief for a lot of people. And also the eclipse is, I think sometimes we get in our own way. And so I just want to sort of put that out there as a um, just a, a, a little helpful suggestion, really. Sometimes we just need to get out of our way and let the sort of the divine information of the universe come through us and flow through us. Because actually, you know, uh, we do know if we let the, the flow of the universe come through us. Now, I'm going to announce the winner of the free astrology session with me. There's been a competition since the last live video. So over the last two weeks, we've had a competition, which the lovely Andrea Britton has been organizing via Gozo in the house. And we now have a winner and I'm going to announce the winner right now. And from all the lovely people who sent in their emails and wanted to enter and we thank you all for your contributions we're really thrilled that so many people were interested to have uh, a one-to-one -one session with me and it's made me realize we'll probably have to run this competition again but tonight's very lucky winner is Sarah Westrup so Sarah if you're watching um, Goza in the house will be in touch with you to give me to give you my contact details so that you can contact me, Sarah, and we can organize your online one-to-one -one astrology session with me. So I'm really looking forward to that, Sarah. It would be great. And in the meantime, I just want to thank, actually, Gozo in the house and Andrea Britton and Claire Mahi and all the other people that contribute to it and are doing such a fantastic job and if you haven't signed up to their online magazine yet I really suggest you do it has so much really useful and fascinating information on there so you know I highly recommend they, they are doing an absolutely amazing amazing job hey Annalise are you in LA or in uh, in Las Vegas at the moment I just see you're watching hi and Laura, thank you. Yes, I know we're all feeling a bit lost these days, Laura, but it will get better. And so I'd just like to say thank you so much, everybody, for... You're in LA, Annalise. Hey, okay. Enjoy. And, um, oh, hi, Sarah, you're watching. Fantastic. You are more than welcome, my love. And I really look forward to connecting with you and, and us having your session. And um, so, hey, ciao, Daniela. So listen, thank you so much, all of you, for joining me. So there will be another one. Hi, Heather. Lovely to see you too. Um, there'll be another one of these on the new moon solar eclipse, which will be on June the 21st, the midsummer solstice. And it will be in the evening. I should think I'll do it at eight o'clock. It seems like quite a good time. So watch out and, uh, on Facebook and I'll be advertising all of that. And this will be available for catch up on YouTube later. Hey, Gozo in the house. Thank you too. You're wonderful too. Okay, guys, thanks a lot. See you next time. Bye. <laughs> Bye.